What's up YouTube, Metallic here, coming at you guys. Today we'll be discussing and reviewing a new indie game that has gotten a lot of attention called Blue Fire. So in the easiest way to describe the game, imagine Hollow Knight, but a 3D and has a cell shaded art style similar to that of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. The game was created by Roby Studios and as far as I can tell, this was their first game. So let's break down my honest thoughts on this game. Let's talk about the story. So on a base level, you explore the kingdom of Panumbra, a place crawling with despairs and monsters that will try to take you out as you traverse the land, completing main and side quests throughout different landscapes on your goal to take down the inevitable of the Queen of Darkness. During your quest, you will encounter many NPCs that will assist you on this journey, whether it be giving you some spicy lore to potentially some really important items and quests, such as bigger wallets, because again, capitalism also exists in this world and some clothes. I gotta say, after finishing Hollow Knight, I've learned that I've really started enjoying these type of games where there just is enough in story to get an idea of what's happening, but it doesn't outline the details of the bigger picture. It creates a sense of wonder and exploration you traditionally can't find in many other games. Like with Dragon Quest XI, you're often told what you should be doing, which is totally fine. However, in Blue Fire, without a clear idea of what I should be doing, I often find myself exploring all around the world just to see what goodies I can find. And the game and the world itself is mapped out in a way that doesn't make it too difficult to find out what you really need to do. And it turns out I actually beat the bosses leading up to the end of the story in a very funky order. It made it a little bit more challenging for myself, but on the plus side, I'm having so much fun with this game. So, at the core, what is this game? Is it a platformer? Action-based game? Metroidvania? Can I get a drum roll, please? Eh, that works. It's a bit of it all. But I would say a bigger emphasis on this game would be the platforming over the combat section. But the way the game handles both platforming and combat is often very connected. When you do go through the game and unlock new abilities, whether it be for fighting that indirectly or directly can go hand-in-hand -hand with combat, for example, when you learn the ability to do a spin charge attack, you can actually use this to get more of an advantage in the air. Think of it like an additional jump to save yourself during some tricky platforming. I really like this idea because it can make for some really interesting gameplay. Going through the game again to finish up some of the higher level voids, it can instantly become easier when you go in with the right builds, such as additional jumps or additional dashes. Because again, the voids are needed to progress your character's life bar which will be essential when you're going off against some of the boss fights in this game. Like, some of the cool things you can do when you're running against a wall, if you use your fire spell ability, it will throw your character away from the wall without using a jump, which can give you some more distance. Another helpful tip that if you're in the presence of foes, if you attack them with your sword, you are able to have an additional jump, which is great for aerial recovery, and crossing some distance really fast. The game also comes through with quite a lot of customization options I wasn't expecting at first. I will admit I am a sucker for customization when it changes your appearance, because why be a sheep in the herd when I could be some demon bunny? Your main weapons are swords, which are often dual wield blades with some visual flair, although the only difference with these blades will just be what the attack stat is. In addition to swords, your character can also use magic in the form of a shield and a fire spell. However, these aren't really used to the same degree as a regular sword combat due to the damage output, as well as your mana source being a very finite source, which can be increased at these shrines by shadow orbs from enemy drops, which is nice because it encourages you not to always run away from a casual fight. Because in this game, it's really easy to do that, to just fly away at a moment's notice. Along with playstyles, you'll later learn on the ability to equip spirits to your character which have a wide array of abilities such as higher jumps, longer wall run distance, more damage output, and many more effects. These are basically Blue Fire version of charms from Hollow Knight, which is clearly inspired here due to the fact they can only be switched at a shrine, aka bench. As much as there are similarities to this game in Hollow Knight, you later gain the ability to fast travel to other shrines which helps out immensely since you will be going back and forth between areas you unlock new abilities. However, it is sad to say that there is no similar to the old stat.
With the sound and art direction of Blue Fire, I absolutely loved it. I'm a huge fan of the cell shaded art, such as The Legends of the Wind Waker, and considering this game aesthetically gives me the same vibes, I immediately fell in love with it. However, I do have to knock it down a few points since my Blue Fire playthrough, there was not a single red talking boat with a lion's mane. I usually have some high expectations only to disappoint them like I did with my own parents. Moving on to the sound direction of the game, I gotta say there is often the little things that add up really nicely. The game itself does a great job of creating immersion by having sounds for everything. In the Temple of Gardens, the rain falling into the temple itself is well represented and illustrates how void of the temple is of light. Every time you slash your sword, you can hear the sword slash along the sounds from clashing on anything. Any sound you make often has an echo as if you were there. The music for this game also carries an interesting style to it. Going into the main city, you get this rather uplifting and contrast music from the rest of the game. Go towards places like the Fire Ribbon, the music reminds me of something you would hear in industrial mountain areas, which essentially is what it is. Another thing that is important in this game is the inclusion of voids. Voids are platforming challenges that, upon completion, will award you a heart to your life. Aside from the very first one, I believe these are optional, but borderline are required in order to beat this game, since the enemies in this game hit pretty hard. These voids usually range in difficulty from 1 to 5 stars, and honestly, they're really fun. And depending on your build of character, you may be able to complete these voids in a different way than intended. I highly recommend completing these as much as you can, purely just because of the enjoyment of these voids as well. Now that I'm spending about 6 minutes talking about what I love about this game, however, there are some pain points I do want to cover, but I do have some good news regarding them. During my journey through Blue Fire, one of the biggest problems I had with this game was the crashes I experienced. This game crashed roughly about 5-6 to six times during my entire journey on the playthrough. I can't tell if it's just due to it being the Switch version, or what was the case, but I never had a game on my Switch crash until playing this game. Thankfully, due to the nature of the game, I saved often and never really much lost progress. But still, this shouldn't be something that happens this often. Thankfully, I was able to reach out to the developer of the game, and they have stated they have been working on patches for this game in regards to the crashes. And as of uploading this video, they recently did tweet again that there has been a patch for the Switch version that does help address crashes and softlocks, which is fantastic. So considering the developer also responds to their fan base, I love it. Another problem I have noticed mainly during boss fights is the weird hitbox. Now, as you can clearly see, I am hitting this boss which is actually not reducing its health bar. This has happened more often than not, but it's just been weird than pretty much prolonged flights longer than they need to be. And if you're like me, you end up getting sloppy due to the frustration to start making desperate power plays only to die. Another thing about the game is the wall fact that the combat is relatively basic. During the 11 hour playthrough, you truly only get two offensive power ups, being the spin slash and the fire spell, which the fire spell does very little damage, and later on it isn't very useful until against the final boss. Your main form of combat will just be you spamming your swords, which causes the combat to be very basic. Again, I understand that maybe the developers were focusing more on platforming as main focus. It's just adding a little bit more to the combat could have created a more diverse experience in terms of combat and kept it more fresh instead of spamming the same strat constantly. There is a parry system you can use similar to the Breath of the Wild parry system, however, very few times this will be a viable option. One more thing I would love to see in this game is some sort of map system. Now, this game isn't nearly as big or complex as Hollow Knight or a typical Legend of Zelda game in terms of sheer world size. However, at first playing this game, it did seem a bit overwhelming as a new player, starting the game without really much idea where to go. Plus the fact that backtracking the first few times was rough due to the fact it wasn't burned in my mind yet with this overworld. However, after you do unlock all the locations, you can start getting adjusted to it. Overall, I would recommend this game. Blue Fire provides a unique approach towards combat and platforming with the deep lore vested world that keeps you asking for more. I haven't completed the main story and still need to finish off the last 5 star voids and I'm greatly looking forward to the completing this game 100%. Hopefully with the success of this game, we can potentially see either a sequel or even some DLC. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know your thoughts and experiences on this game as you plan on playing this game. Comment down below what other game suggestions you have and feel free 
to smack that subscribe button and smash the like button. And don't forget to hit the bell. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.